played a uh, part in Billy the Kid's life. Uh, he lived there sometimes, different times, working in and out of East Texas. Uh, he married a woman from camp at one time. And uh, his friend, Dua Travis, is buried in Myrtle Springs Cemetery just outside Canton. Uh, the East Texas region was integral to his life probably from about the age of 40 to 60, somewhere in there. But uh, the Billy the Kid Museum is located in Canton, at the Mountain in Canton, Texas. It's open on first Monday weekends. You might want to call and get directions. Uh, my phone number is 972-504-6608. My email is BillyTheKid1950 at cnbcom.net. I'd like to tell you that the museum in Canton, as well as the museum in Heiko, have a different take on Billy the Kid than what history has. We hold that Billy the Kid not only was not killed in 1881, but that he lived until the age of 90, almost 91, and died in 1950. The Billy the Kid Museum in, in Heiko, Texas is our home campus, you might say, because it's Heiko where he died and lived many of his later years. <coughs> uh, Billy the Kid, and most historians say, died in 1881, and that's not quite so. The historians say that's true, but that's not quite so. He escaped, had been wounded that night, lived in Mexico part of the time, and lived with many aliases the rest of his life. This afternoon, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Billy the Kid Museum in Canton, Texas. Again, our take is that Billy the Kid died in 1950 in Heiko, Texas, and we promote this. We also have other things in the museum, excuse me. We have John Wilkes Booth, who was not killed, as history said so, and who died in Oklahoma, Enid, Oklahoma to be exact, who also lived in Granbury and Glen Rose, Texas. Uh, we also promote uh, the Kennedy assassination, the Jesse James story, who also was not killed in 1882 but died in 1951 in Granbury, Texas. Let me explain to you how these two stories of Billy the Kid and Jesse James are tied together. Billy the Kid supposedly was killed in 1881. A year later, Jesse James supposedly was killed. Billy the Kid actually died in 1950 in Heiko, Texas. And a year later, in the correct order, a few miles down the road, Jesse James died in 1951. Their fake deaths were a year apart. Their actual deaths were a year apart. It's kind of a coincidence, like many of the coincidences in the Lincoln and Kennedy um, assassinations. I would like to say that there is a, a large movement abroad here to pardon Billy the Kid because he got an unfair trial at Mesilla when he was convicted for the killing of Sheriff Brady. He was in the group that killed Sheriff Brady. He probably didn't do it, but he was in the group. I'm sorry, but he was an accomplice. And I, it really behooves me and upsets me that any decent person
basically clean life, basically legal, having worked in law enforcement even, and 69 years later, he dies of a heart attack in Ico, Texas. Without any hesitation, I could certainly ask for a pardon for Billy the Kid, who 69 years after, after he killed these other two deputies, lived a life pretty decent, pretty legal, a pretty good citizen. He lived under aliases. He lived in fear of his life. He went to the governor of New Mexico, Governor Mabry, in 1950 and asked for a pardon. He was really treated pretty horribly. And then he died of a broken heart, heart attack a month later in Heiko, Texas. He lived 69 years of a pretty good life. He wanted to atone, became a Christian, and wanted to atone for the things he had done wrong, and was really asking forgiveness. I have no problem at all with pardoning this man. 69 years is a long time. And I think even the heirs and, and descendants of the uh, people involved, like Andrew Bell and, and Brady, I think even they can realize that 69 years is a long time, and they, he wanted a man had been that long, put it behind us. I can go for a pardon for Billy the Kid who died in 1950. It is unconscionable for me to even think about pardoning the Billy the Kid they think died in 1881. Now, another thing I'd like to mention is about the, um, the historians and the November 1950 meeting of Billy the Kid with Governor Mabry of New Mexico. He was promised a hearing, a private, quiet hearing with a few people there. He went with uh, William V. Morrison and, Bar and Barbara Jean Cookler, his daughter, uh, Morrison's daughter. And they went to New Mexico, and he was afraid to even go in the uh, museum, which we call Lincoln County Museum, it was the old jail. Afraid to go in there because of the horrors of being in there and having killed the two men. And he saw places and told about places that, that existed back in 1881. Everything panned out. Everything was just like it was. And when he said something was in this place, in this museum, back then, <clears throat> he was right. They changed it in the years since. He visited with many old timers. Marti Mrs. Martell Ables, Severo Gallegos, many of them. And they signed affidavits that this man before them, Brushy Bill Roberts of Heiko, Texas, was the Billy the Kid that they knew in 1880, 1881, 1879. They signed affidavits and refused to change their statements. Now, the historians who were at that November 1950 meeting, they got all choked up and upset because Brushy Bill Roberts couldn't even remember his wife's name and, and couldn't remember this fact and that fact. He was 90 years old. He had a stroke in the governor's office. He had to go lie down to recover from it. What happened when he got there? He looked around and the walls were lined with lawmen with guns. A lot of old uh, Sheriff uh, uh, Garrick's heirs and descendants were there. They're all in law enforcement. They were there. Lying, people lining the walls with guns. And some of them saying, well, if this is Billy the Kid, let's hang him, because he's still guilty. Of course, they were discounting the fact that the uh, statute of limitations wouldn't pro uh, allow that. But here, this 90-year-old man, 90 years old, I have problems sometimes remembering what happened yesterday. A 90-year-old man, okay, he got some dates wrong. So what? He lived with so many different aliases. It's a miracle, and he wasn't rich. He lived in many old poor jobs as a cowboy, plucked turkeys in Comanche, Texas, worked in the oil fields, worked as a lawman, did whatever he could to make a living like most people those days. This was Billy the Kid, and yes, he choked at that November 1950 meeting. I'll tell you how much he was faking it. You know what? They said he was faking it, that he was making all this stuff, that he was playing the part. Excuse me, if he were faking it and playing the part, all he had would, would have had to do to make himself look more credible was when they asked him when he was born and where he was born, all he could, would have had to say is, I was born November 23, 1859 in, in New York, which is what Pat Garrett's book said, but that wasn't the truth. 
He stuck his neck out because he was telling the truth. And he said, I was born December the 31st, 1859, in Buffalo Gap, Texas. Now, let me get on that a little bit. <clears throat> if he'd learned the part, he'd said the other, wouldn't he? But he didn't. He stuck to what he knew was the truth, regardless of what the historians thought. Now, in Comanche, I mean in Buffalo Gap, there's a beautiful museum there. And I certainly advocate, I would advocate field trips to that museum. I'll tell you what, that's a great museum. Now, there's a little book there that said that the first white person came to Buffalo Gap in 1877. Isn't that unusual? Fort Phantom Hill, just a few miles away, with U.S. soldiers, it was put there in 1852. The Butterfield Overland Relay Station was put in Buffalo Gap, that area, right there, in 1858, bringing passengers across the United States twice a week, starting in 1858. Are you trying to tell me that that fort was put there to defend Indians, and that the relay station was run by Indians, and the people on the stagecoaches were Indians? I'm not trying to be offensive to Indians, but I'm trying to tell the truth. That fort was put there to defend white settlers. Those stage relay stations were run by settlers, and the people on those stagecoaches were settlers of all kinds. People started coming to Buffalo Gap area long before it's called Buffalo Gap. It's where the buffalo went through the gap, and then they gave it the name of what it was. So, Billy the Kid was born in Buffalo Gap, December the 31st, 1859, and let's establish that. Brushy Bill Roberts said it, and that's the way it is. Now, at that November of 1950 meeting at the governor's, he did choke on some answers. So what? 90 years old? That's very logical. And I will say this, that uh, he was faking it so much that a month later, he died of a heart attack. And I will always say that he died of a broken heart on the streets of Heiko, Texas, as a result of the horrible meeting and the treatment he received in November 1950 at Governor Mabry's office. Again, betrayed. Governor Wallace, who promised him a pardon, betrayed him. Governor Mabry, who promised him an informal, small hearing, betrayed him. And I say now that it's time for history and these historians to come forth and let's tell the truth and let's get it out. It's interesting that we have a letter on file from President Truman who was sent a book of Alias Billy the Kid by William V. Morrison and Dr. Saunderson. And he said that he hoped that uh, maybe a new regime would come up in uh, New Mexico, a new governor would uh, be fair about this and, and, and correct history. So it's, it's very interesting. Even the president was interested in this. Of course, we know that President Rutherford B. Hayes was also interested in it. And President Teddy Roosevelt was involved with it by uh, Pat Garrett. But I do want to say this, that I love New Mexico. This has nothing to do against New Mexico. I highly advocate that people go to the museum in Fort Sumner, Lincoln, and um, both of them in Fort Sumner and the one in Lincoln, and all the buildings in Lincoln. I love New Mexico. I love every part of it. I love the mountains. I love the deserts. I love Billy the Kid territory. I love the Billy the Kid Casino in Rio Dosa Downs. I love the horse racing. I love Roswell. I love New Mexico. So this is nothing against New Mexico. I highly advocate, and I go to New Mexico all the time. I love New Mexico, and I go to even these museums that uh, espouse a different philosophy. It's okay, because the main point is, is that we like Billy the Kid. And I, I'll have to deal with that a little bit. You know, he did kill some men, and he killed two long men, we know. Why do we like Billy the Kid? I think we're fascinated, most of us, by the Old West, by Westerners, by cowboys. And I think we're fascinated with Billy the Kid because, given the same incidents, if we were in jail, we probably would have done the same thing he did. Killers, it might result, result in killing. But I think when it comes to survival, we all have that instinct in us of survival. And I think we can relate to a you know, poor kid, had a bad shot in life, you know, had two or three different mothers or seemingly mothers, uh, moved around from place to place, I had to live with this past. And I think that we all can relate to Billy the Kid. I think we all have some side of us, something in our closet that can relate to Billy the Kid. And as for historians, I need to tell you folks, if it comes to believing you or Brushy Bill Roberts, I'm going with Brushy Bill Roberts. 
if I'm going with that he made some mistakes, so what? He was 90. He lived enough of his life, and he'd been through enough turmoil. He's entitled to make a few mistakes about what date this and that was. Big deal. And I also want to tell you that if it comes to you versus those affidavits that are on file, I'm not going to call Mrs. Martell Abel's a liar. She knew him then. She knew him in 1950. And if she said that that's the same person, it's good enough for me. She lived it. You didn't. So, this afternoon, I will take you on a tour of the Billy the Kid Museum in Canton, Texas. Again, my number in case you ever want to come, and it may be at the time it's closed, it's 972-504-6608. And I would like to tell you that it's unheated, unair conditioned, up in a little mountain in Canton, rustic, old-timey. It's the way Billy the Kid lived. And I want it to be presented as a, as a legitimate type of museum. So if it ain't fancy enough for you, I'm sorry about that. But it does present Billy the Kid. Thank you. We'll see you at Canton. Here I am in Canton, Texas. The exit to the museum is exit 528, FM 17, Grand Saline. Billy the Kid at one time lived and worked in Grand Saline. But this is the back door, you might say, to Canton. This is Interstate 20, one of the busiest highways of the United States at this moment. As you can hear the traffic, as you can hear the traffic go by me. And this is very light traffic. You exit at FM 17. At the stop sign, you, you stop, obviously, and you turn right. You go down exactly one mile, and on the right, you will find an exit to the right for a street called Palomino. And it'll say Palomino, Driver Street, The Mountain. You'll make a right there. So at this moment, I'm going to drive down to the stop sign, turn right and go one mile, and I'll stop at the exit on the right, Palomino Drive, The Mountain. This is FM 17, where their car's coming from exactly one mile north of me is the Interstate 20. We're about 66 miles east of Dallas. So it's about 65 miles east of Dallas to FM 17 and one mile up FM 17 to where we are now. This is the area in Canton on the outskirts called the Mountain. It's an old west town I'll show it to you as we go along. You'll see this sign here that says Palomino Pass should you come here to visit. And you'll turn right. You can't miss the sign that says the mountain. Oops, excuse me. Excuse me. You turn right here on this road and you I'll walk you through this. It'll be kind of eye-boggling. You'll see the road goes past, goes down here past a little hotel called Country Inn, and then it turns right. I'll stop here and go back down there. Right here that you came in on, this is Palomino Pass. You'll go down this road. Now, you'll be in front of the Country Inn right here. As you can see this is very old western. There's a log cabin right there, and another. This is only open once a month for about four days, called the Trades Days in Canton, Texas. This road right here, Palomino Pass, you can see it goes to the right. It also goes down the hill to the left. So you follow it to the right. When you follow it, down the dead end, when it ends, the Billy the Kid Museum is there on your right hand side. So here we are at the mountain. Our next stop will be the Billy the Kid Museum. At the top of the mountain, Billy the Kid Museum of Canton, Billy the Kid Outlaw Museum. This comprises, this is the Billy the Kid Museum side right here, comprises three rooms. The first two are Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid. The third one is 
Billy the Kid and Jesse James who had their lives tied together. The building to the left is the outlaw part. It has Bonnie and Clyde, John Wilkes Booth, other outlaws, and the Kennedy assassination. I will stop and start and skip it before I go inside and show you the outside first. This is the area between the two buildings. There's a walkway and a large deck. There are six large windows in this museum that contain information. We call them viewing windows. And the reason we call them that is a lot of times people, they come a long way just to find out that something's closed. And so since they're not too happy, they get uh, disappointed. Well, we have viewing windows and we have much of our merchandise that uh, is displayed inside is displayed both front and back on our windows. So that if you should come here, you will be able to see something. There's a buffalo for the birth of Billy the Kid, Buffalo Gap, December the 31st, 1859. I'll kind of walk you, don't want to make you dizzy. But this is the other side. We're on top of this little mountain here in Canton. As you can see, we're hidden up here in a mountain. Hidden like any reputable outlaw would be. Because Billy the Kid lived the life of Alias. And this is very much like he would live. In the cold when it's cold and in the heat when it's hot. And this is the complex of the Billy the Kid Outlaw Museums. In just a moment I will take you inside and give you a brief tour of what's inside. For those of you who can't make it, someday maybe you might make it. And uh, give you a little bit of history at the same time. Thank you. Enter the Billy the Kid Museum. I belong to the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang. I strongly support it. And you know, we just like having a good time. We get together in the mountains outside of Rio Dos every July. It doesn't matter which version of Billy the Kid you believe. It's, we all like the same Billy the Kid. All his daring exploits were done before he was 21 and while he was basically in New Mexico. So we're all the same Billy the Kid. I highly endorse the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang for good people. Again, we'll get ready to go into the Billy the Kid Museum. There's viewing windows like that. And uh, as we go inside, I'll stop and talk a little bit. This highlights Buffalo Gap. It's kind of dark in here, but it's the best I can do. And it's kind of like the life Billy lived. Buffalo Gap, Texas, birthplace of Billy the Kid, December the 31st, 1859. State flag of Texas, in Texas, part of Billy the Kid's heritage. We have Pat Garrett area over here. We have a wonderful print that we got out print but a copy of uh, Billy the Kid we got through the an auction by the Lincoln County Heritage Trust there's a painting of Billy the Kid escaping there's another picture of Billy the Kid here's a newspaper in here 1883 from South Carolina talking about Billy the Kid and we're not talking about some other one in 1883 obviously after he supposedly had been killed <coughs> here's a uh, Picture of Salazar, Eugenio, Eugenio Salazar, who said that Billy the Kid wasn't killed and he lived on. This is a uh, copy of a, uh, right here is a copy of an old post board that they had up in 1882 and had Billy the Kid's name listed on it to leave the county. This is kind of interesting. Couldn't leave the county if he weren't there or if you weren't alive. This is a warrant for Billy the Kid. Copy of it we have here. Dated 1882. It's a copy of a warrant. They couldn't find him. It was a warrant for his arrest in New Mexico. People will tell you, oh it's a different kid. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was Billy the Kid. And he's our Billy the Kid. So here was a warrant for him in 1882 and 83 in New Mexico if he were alive <clears throat> why would they be looking for him 
also I'm talking about we do we certainly support New Mexico <coughs> here's a deal of uh, Miss Martell Abels it says woman says Billy the Kid visited her here in July and that was in uh, 1950 and she was used by New Mexico because there were a lot of imposters for Billy the Kid because he wasn't dead and she was used to uh, catch them and, and prove that they weren't Billy the Kid when she met Brushy Bill Roberts she said this is Billy the Kid we have things here on Mesilla the Old Mill in Rio Dosa, Fox Cave uh, just about a lot of things on New Mexico just unbelievable how much we have in New Mexico Here's a uh, Judge Hefner and I in Heiko, Texas at the Billy the Kid Days last year. There's Dr. Tunstall who recently passed away and we're very appreciative of Dr. Tunstall. Would like to say that uh, there's a front that uh, a book that uh, Judge Hefner and I did, Billy the Kid, Killed in New Mexico, Died in Texas. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Tussle did Billy the Kid and Me were the same. Judge Hefner did the trial of Billy the Kid. And I'd like to say our dedication wall is to Dr. William Tunstall, a tireless researcher, and Judge Bobby Hefner kept the truth alive. This is a picture of Brett Hall, the new man on the scene for Billy the Kid, a great researcher from Alton, Illinois. A great researcher. So this is kind of like our dedication wall here in this first room. Here's a copy of some books. Thing about uh, James Anthony, whose father in 1945 recognized Billy the Kid downtown Hyco and pulled a gun on him and drew a gun on him. And uh, very interesting, another proof that Billy the Kid was Brushy Bill Roberts. Here's a little article by Ray Martinez, one of the mayors in uh, Colorado and uh, he's writing about Billy the Kid wasn't killed in 1981 I highly advise you his name is Ray Martinez Fort Collins Colorado mayor pull him up on the website interesting story I'll go into the next room this room is almost all in New Mexico not quite all but Lincoln New Mexico a lot of Lincoln a lot of Lincoln in the Lincoln County Museum um, just one thing after another. Postcards, um, posters. This is the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang wall. And uh, this picture of Billy the Kid. There's the Outlaw Gazette and such. These are campouts that we have in July. There's pictures of people having a lot of fun. This is, notice there's New Mexico in the Chaparral of New Mexico. Here is we. I highly advocate and endorse the Billy the Kid Museums in Fort Sumner. There's two of them. One by the purported grave and one downtown. Uh, Don Sweets, we certainly encourage you to go to both of them. We go to them and we certainly enjoy them. They're good museums and have a lot to teach you. Beautiful. This is the Heiko Hamilton Wall. has a lot of things of Billy the Kid. There's no picture of him. And there's Billy the Kid. In his old age. It's hard for a lot of people to jump from a youthful, daring guy to to an older guy that you know, ninety years old is it's very hard to to make the transition. But anyway, this is our museum wall. We highly endorse the uh, museums in, in New Mexico and we highly endorse the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang. Here's his great escape. We're lucky enough to have this print. We got it at auction also. And things about the Lincoln County War. Here's just different souvenirs and such. Trophies from the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang Summer Get Together, which is just a lot of fun. Lincoln, New Mexico. And this is just New Mexico, New Mexico, New Mexico. Let me walk you over here to something that I think is very important. This talks about Hamilton, Texas. There's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid right before he died. That is Billy the Kid, folks. Here's another picture of him. 
There's a picture of Brett Hall and his wife Stephanie. We're by the uh, Billy the Kid grave in Hamilton, Texas. Right there in Hamilton, Texas. Billy the Kid's grave. Hamilton, Texas. And there's a picture. November 1950. Disgraced. Humiliated in New Mexico. People said, that old man's a fraud. He learned his lines. They even thought his heart attack or whatever he had that day was a was a fake. A month later, Billy the Kid, his final last picture. Jesse James' room here, who was J. Frank Dalton. There's a picture of Bud Hardcastle, the greatest Billy the, I mean, Jesse James researcher from Oklahoma, Purcell, Oklahoma, a great researcher. There's Jesse James and Billy the Kid and a bunch of old timers all together. In Missouri, there's affidavits and statements here. And there's another picture of Billy the Kid. There's some, you know, if you ever should get to visit here, there's an old, old desk. A lot of pictures of the digging up of the grave in uh, Granbury. I knew then it was not the right grave because uh, it was the wrong kind of casket. And the, uh, whoever they said was uh, that they proved that Jesse James was buried in um, Missouri that was not true. Starr would not sign the affidavit. All they did was find a couple of teeth at the farm match them up to Jesse James. Could have been any James from 1840 on and they said this is Jesse James. Not so. The body they found in the grave was buried face down. Would they bury their loved ones face down? I don't think so. I do not think so but they'd bury somebody they didn't like face down and the casket was a the wrong kind of casket. He was buried in a metal casket, not a wooden casket. When they first started digging that grave up, they found a woman's bones, and then, then they cut the first of all, couldn't find any bones. <clears throat> then they found a woman's bones. And then they, they found bones that were too deteriorated to do any testing on. Then all of a sudden, miraculously, they do some testing. And they find out, supposedly, that that was Jesse James. Not so, folks. Jesse James died in Granbury, Texas. If you don't believe it, come here and read what Ola Everhart said. She's a straight shooting country gal that told it like it was. Another picture of Jesse James. This room is not f quite finished, but it's got plenty in it, in it for you to view. I will now go to the Bonnie and Clyde room. And there's a picture of the Bonnie and Clyde, of the Clyde Barrel's funeral. There's old Bonnie. There's a Jesse James poster. Only dead or alive, Jesse James. I mean, excuse me, Bonnie and Clyde. And uh, I'll go in here to the Bonnie and Clyde room. This one's not quite finished either. It's got a lot of stuff in the old uh, era of Bonnie and Clyde. It's kind of dark in here. There's President Roosevelt, who was president. Uh, just some basic newspaper items and such. Bonnie and Clyde, villains or victims. And they were a combination of both. But anyway, there's a lot of things in here about Bonnie and Clyde. Just happened that I went to the school, the elementary school that Clyde went to, Sydney Lanier in Dallas. I lived in Oak Cliff in West Dallas where they lived. I ran the streets they ran. I knew the people they knew later who were older of course. And I don't think you can write history unless you've lived a little of it. You can't write it with feeling if you don't. This room right here has John Wilkes Booth in it. It's kind of dark in here. I'm just going to go on to the Kennedy assassination. Uh, the John Wilkes Booth room does uh, promote uh, Glen Rose and Granbury. This is the Kennedy assassination room. The Kennedy assassination disturbed many of us. It was pulled off right in front of us and they got away with it. There's the man who stood to gain the most from the assassination. The presidency he always wanted versus the Kennedys he actually hated. Here's a picture of Madeline Brown. She's now dead. She was the girlfriend of Lyndon Johnson. She made the comment that the night before the assassination that the comment was made that tomorrow that uh, they'd be finished with those GD effing Irish Mafia Kennedys. And she told me that on the day of the assassination Johnson called her from the Texas Hotel and said in a few minutes, in a little while, 
you'll be making love with the President of the United States. And I don't think he was talking about Kennedy. She wrote a book about it called Texas in the Morning. If you can get a hold of a copy, get it. It'll show history as it really is. There's my friend Jim Henson who runs the Outlaw Museum side. He's also from Heiko, Texas, a great story writer and historian. Pictures of Lee Harvey Oswald's house where he lived at the time. The Kennedy assassination. Jacqueline Kennedy I'm very fond of. The Warren Commission with a picture of Johnson looking over it. A very interesting picture. Here's another interesting picture in here. <coughs> They're on Air Force One. Johnson's looking back at Albert Thomas from Texas. It looks like they're winking. They certainly didn't look very upset or sad about an assassination. Johnson made sure he was sworn in as president before he left Dallas. The role he always wanted. His brother Sam Houston wrote a book about him. Gave a lot of insight if you really read into it. And told how his brother always wanted to be president. And not only did he get to be president, but he brought Jacqueline in with blood all over to witness the situation. To me, it was a disgraceful act of assassination and a dis disgraceful swearing in with a former president's wife covered with blood watching. Very interesting. There's a picture of elegant Jacqueline. Another Jacqueline. These are the pictures of the book depository and Oswald and such. And there's a faithful picture. Right before the, they leave Fort Worth. There's Johnson with a smug look. Soon to be president of the United States. John Connolly, governor of Texas. <laughs> Caught a bullet. I don't think he was very happy about that. And John F. Kennedy. I had no idea. That soon he would be in a casket. This is the John F. Kennedy assassination room. One of my favorite rooms because of my involvement into the assassination. And uh, if you ever get to come up here, there's a picture of Madeline Brown and I. Of Madeline Brown and me, pardon me. And a, a good friend. I'll miss her. I'm sorry she's gone. One of the last few people around to know the real story and to tell the truth. At this point, I'll close out. Thank you for coming with me. That is Highway 64 that goes from I-20 to Tyler there. It's another entrance to the mountain and to the museum. Just ought to give you a shot of it. There's a front entrance called the mountain. There are shops, beds and rests, old timey places. So if you ever need to uh, come here and you want to stay and spend the night, there's lodging here. Probably at the best price you'll find it in the whole area. We're connected on this mountain to Old Mill Marketplace which is next door and has hundreds of shops all down in here Old Mill Marketplace so if you ever need to uh, find accommodation for the mountain you might call Old Mill Marketplace also there's uh, a lot of places to stay here a lot of bed and rest the rooms run from like $49 up which is extremely reasonable I'll go down and give you one more shot before I leave of the mountain in Canton on Highway 64. Last I'll say about the mountain for a while. This is the mountain of Canton. Shop the mountain. Late night shopping. Best time to come here is on Friday or Saturday night or first Monday. Everything is lighted up like Disneyland or Disney World. It's just really unbelievable old west disney world land and uh, there's the buffalo girls hotel their reservation number is 567 stay which is area code 903 and this is the old mill marketplace and the mountain 
in Canton. Thank you. This is just a little added attraction. I'm in Granbury, Texas. I thought I'd just throw this on the tape just for a little fun. That's the Hood County Courthouse right there. Right across the street used to be the Chamber of Commerce. It's a pasta house, Italian food. Used to be an old gas station. They say that Bonnie and Clyde pulled in. They used to have the gas pumps right where I'm looking underneath it. The roof there used to have gas station gas pumps there and they say that Bonnie and Clyde stopped in there one time got sandwiches and, and gas and someone said ain't that Bonnie and Clyde the man that the father said keep, and the father said keep your mouth shut pump their gas because uh, the rule was you didn't say anything about Bonnie and Clyde down there to the left in the corner I'll show you something else in a minute See, there's a place called St. Helens. John Wilkes Booth, who went by St. Helen, had a saloon right there. He uh, had saloons in uh, Glen Rose and Granbury. He had two here that he ran. One was St. Helens. It wasn't called St. Helens then. This is the Granbury Square right here. Beautiful little town. Beautiful little town. Again, the courthouse. I'll walk. Don't get dizzy. Straight ahead. The building on the corner there was called the Gay Lady Saloon. John Wilkes Booth ran a, a saloon there also. So I'm going to halt here, but this is Granbury, Texas, a beautiful bed and rest tourist city. If you come to Texas, be sure to see Canton, Heiko, Glen Rose, and Granbury. I'm at the uh, courthouse at Granbury, beautiful courthouse. There's that pasta house where the uh, Bonnie and Clyde stop got gas. And there's St. Helens there. Here's a closer view. This old building here was uh, the saloon that he ran, John Wilkes Booth. It was here in Granbury that he confessed to killing Lincoln and who he really was. He thought he was dying. I'll tell you that story in a moment. Street in Granbury, Texas. Where this frame house is, over a hundred years ago, was a two-story boarding house, and John Wilkes Booth lived right on this lot in that boarding house. It was here, the lay in bed, lying in bed, and thought he was gonna die, called for a priest from Dallas to come and give him his last rites, confessed to killing Lincoln, told him where to find the gun, and they found it. It was wrapped in a cloth with a clipping of the assassination and he recovered and said oh my goodness what did I say they told him that he confessed to killing Lincoln and he got up and left town quickly John Wilkes Booth lived here a good article in Texas Highway Department magazine free road for Texas talks about John Wilkes Booth Billy the Kid and Jesse James they all came through this area and they're all outlaws, and Texas was an outlaw state, and that's why they came here. Thank you. This is the Granbury Cemetery in Granbury, Texas, where Jesse James is buried. I will now take you to his plot. We're in the cemetery now. You can see the little sign that says Jesse James Plot. I'll go to the left, and you will see the grave of Jesse James it says Jesse Woodson James September the 5th 1847 died August the 15th 1951 and at the bottom has supposedly killed in 1882 and it has a Confederate flag and CSA for Confederate States of America at the top Folks, this is Jesse Woodson James. I know they, I was here last year when they dug up this grave trying to find him. And they pulled up a, a vault and I said this is not Jesse James' grave. He is here. The one they dug up in Missouri, I don't know who that was, but uh, more than likely it was the Charlie Bigelow that they said it was. This is Jesse Woodson James here, Granbury, Texas.
in Granbury. I'm downtown. This is called the Wagon Yard Antique Shop. There's a lot of old places in Granbury. Wagon Yard is one of my favorites. So wagon wheels. This is very, very old in here. Davy Crockett's widow lived here at one time. Matter of fact, she's buried outside of Granbury. The famous Davy Crockett. Let me walk, let me put a home hold and I'll tell you a little more. The jail. Very beautiful down here. It's right off the square. Granbury is just a place you just need to see. You have to see it to believe it. Jesse James died here. Billy the Kid came in and out of here, of course. John Wilkes Booth lived here. And uh, Jesse James is buried here. So you need to come to Granbury. If you come to Texas to see anything, you need to be sure to go to Heiko and Glen Rose and Granbury and Canton. I'm closing out now. This is Janae Valdez in Granbury, Texas. Granbury, Texas is so beautiful here, I just couldn't leave it without showing you some more. There's a beautiful old Southern Bell house. This is definitely an old rebel Confederate holdout place named after General Granbury of the great Confederate States of America. There's another old house here. We're on Business 377 that leads right downtown. There's the courthouse. You see it's always busy here. It's quite a tourist town. There's a lake here, Lake Granbury. There's uh, townhomes and, and uh, condominiums and there's uh, gingerbread houses. There's bed and rest, thousands of rooms for bed and rest here. It's just a, a wonderful place to go. If you ever get here, Mary Kate Durham is the historian here of note in beautiful Granbury, Texas. That's Mary Kate Durham, the historian here. And uh, Jesse James died here. John Wilkes Booth, and he's buried here, pardon me. And John Wilkes Booth ran a couple of saloons here. So you can't beat the history of Granbury, Texas. Thank you. Hey Valdez, I'm here on Business 377 in beautiful Granbury, Texas. You can see they have a lot of antique shops, antique malls, Arbor House, all kinds of antiques here in this old historic city. The lake there is called Lake Granbury. The house where Jesse James died is now underwater, so I can't take you to a lake where Jesse James died. But uh, this is Granbury, Texas. And uh, come here, Gabby. Come here, Gabby. <laughs> and uh, all the antique shops that you ever wanted to see are here. Janae Valdez, I'm in Hamilton, Texas, where Billy the Kid lived on and off and where he is buried. This whole building here is on Main Street, Highway 36 in Hamilton. Billy the Kid at one time was stabbed across the stomach and put in this uh, hospital to recuperate. And uh, so that's why I say, he, you know, he wasn't quite perfect. There were times that he had some uh, rough uh, situations in his lifetime. But anyway, this is the old hospital in Hamilton where Billy the Kid was once hospitalized with a knife wound across his stomach. I'm uh, Janae Valdez. Here again I am in the Hamilton County Square, Hamilton County Courthouse. This is the old wisdom bench that Billy the Kid, in his 80s and up to 90, used to sit and talk, old timers would talk, old times and all the things they did as old cowboys and outlaws. This is called the Tree of Wisdom. This large tree, the concrete, is called the Tree of Wisdom. This is the courthouse here in Hamilton. This is a beautiful square. And Billy the Kid sat right here on this bench. One old person told me that around here one day that Billy the Kid was walking and he came around the corner of his car, this other person did, and that he honked at someone else. It scared Billy the Kid. He said Billy the Kid jumped up in the air, spread around and drew guns, imaginary guns, as if he were drawing on them. And he said it scared Billy the Kid and he thought something got him. This is Billy the Kid territory right here. In just a moment, I'll take you around the corner, the other side of the square, there's the Jordan Pharmacy. Uh, Billy the Kid used to come to town every day, and he would uh, 
walk all these businesses and talk. Then he go to the Jordan Pharmacy for coffee. And uh, he's been in all these stores. The Solomons have stores here. Billy the Kid walk these streets, talk, just talk here. And uh, then we'll go to the cemetery. Thank you. Here I am on the other side of the Hamilton County Square. That's the Jordan, Jordan Pharmacy. And Billy the Kid used to go in there and drink coffee. And he walked all these old places here, the cafes and such on the square. He lived down this road, out of town, several miles, down off by the river, in a little old shack with his wife. And they would walk or hitchhike to town every day. This is Billy the Kid territory, Hamilton, Texas, and his beautiful, beautiful courthouse, which is really something to see. And I hope sometime that you come to Hamilton and Heiko, Glen Rose and Granbury. And um, this is the, the courthouse. On the back side we just left was the Tree of Wisdom and the Bench of Wisdom, where they would sit and talk under the shade tree in the summer in the nice weather. And right down that road, Billy the Kid is buried at the IOOF Cemetery. We are 20 miles south of Heiko, Texas on Highway 281. Next, we'll go to the cemetery. To Texas at the IOOF Cemetery on Highway 281. You can always find Billy the Kid's grave. If you'll notice, that right across the street is a green uh, shingle-sided house. That's the marker for Billy the Kid's grave. Then you can step across the street or park over here. I suggest you make a trip sometime to Billy the Kid's grave. William Henry Roberts. AKA also known as Billy the Kid. And this is the grave of Billy the Kid. He's actually buried right here. And on this side, there's some flowers. But we're 20 miles south of Pico. Billy the Kid lived here. He was poor, lived in shacks. He was a cowboy. Uh, he just made a living any way he could make a living. And he and his wife would come in, or he would come in. Hitchhiking or walking into Hamilton. Thank you. John River and its river bottoms. I'm about seven miles north of Hamilton and about 13 miles south of Heiko. Heiko, Hamilton, and Carlton are all in the same area. Billy the Kid lived out there somewhere, way out over those woods, on a ranch with his wife in a little shack. He would walk to this highway and catch a ride to town. If he went to the left, to my left, that would be Hamilton, Texas. And if he were to go the other way, he go to Heiko, Texas, and Carlton is also, Carlton's right through those trees. He stayed pretty well in his territory here, Carlton, Hamilton, and Heiko, and our next stop will be Heiko, Texas, where Billy the Kid died. I'm where Billy the Kid lived when he died. This is Lena Street off of College Street in Heiko, Texas. I'll show you some more as we walk around. Notice how this looks like, kind of like old San Patricio. Here Billy the Kid lived on Lena Street, which looks more like an alley. It's down that little, there's the road right there. And down that road he would walk to town. In the last day of his life he walked to town down that road and died in downtown Heiko. This is country. You can imagine. 1950 is even more so. Just like San Patricio. Look at that road. That's the road right there folks. The street. And I found that Billy the Kid would often live in places like this. Kind of set back, like, look like an alley. Very country, old, of course, poor. But this is where he was comfortable 
or where he was hiding. He didn't want to be up on Main Street living. He wanted to be back here. And they said that every time he came to the door here, he came with a loaded gun. I'll walk up and take some other pictures. Please excuse the dog. This is the last house of Billy the Kid. He walked out that door, walked down that little walkway, down the little alley looking street. There's an old part of a wash tub. He probably washed his clothes in it. Billy the Kid lived right here. I'll take another picture of it too, just a second from a different angle. Another angle, the northern angle of the house. Old water cooler in there. More than likely, probably the same one he used back in the 50s. Billy the Kid's house. A humble abode on Lena Street. Looking around. Country. Hidden. Secluded. Looks much like San Patricio. Just ruts for a road. Now we'll go see some more Billy the Kid things in Heiko. Here I am on Main Street. There's the KKK, the Coffee Cup Cafe, a famous eating place around here. There's a little log cabin on Main Street. Very beautiful little log cabin. And right down that street, Billy the Kid walked to his destiny. Death. Heiko. They had the uh, restaurant here downtown, the Jersey Lily, named after uh, Judge Wazoo. Now this old building's here, moved to the little log cabin there, it's very beautiful. There's the Rutland's funeral home, that's a new building, the old one's gone, where they prepared the body of Billy the Kid. Here, right here, well first of all, excuse me, right here. Coffee. 90 years old, walked from town to mail a letter for his wife, went in here and got a cup of coffee. He was walking in back home. And when he got right in here, there was no truck park here. And Billy the Kid, right in front of this Michael Real Estate building, Billy the Kid went down on the knee, resting on the back of the car in the front of and right here, folks, Billy the Kid died in Michael Center. Billy the Kid, the real Billy the Kid, age 90, a month after being disgraced in New Mexico, put down by historians, having a stroke and everybody thinks he's faking it, died right here. He wasn't faking it. Billy the Kid told the truth. Billy the Kid said. Now we'll go around the corner. Down Hako. There's a statue to Billy the Kid. Right off the square. Not really a square, more of just a downtown area. A lot of beautiful old buildings in here, Hako. Just really beautiful buildings. There's a log cabin again. There's the Jersey Lily. Where it says serendipity right there. I'll stop for a minute because the car's coming, but that used to be a barber shop. And it was at that barber shop that H.H. H. Anthony was going in 1945 or 46. He had his grandsons with him. He recognized Billy the Kid, drew a gun on him, and Billy the Kid took out running, afraid that he'd been discovered. Billy the Kid. Right here on this square, he walked these streets, he walked this square. And again, right down the street, the little cafe where he got a coffee, and in front of the real estate office where he died. Here's a close-up 
of the statue of Billy the Kid downtown. Just called Billy. Paco's beautiful. I mean, it is charming. You cannot possibly even think about coming to Texas without coming to see Heiko. And look at it. The white building right ahead. Billy the Kid died right in front of that building in the street. To the left of it across the alley was the cafe where he got his last cup of coffee. History took place here. There's the Jersey Lily. And next to the Jersey Lily was where the barbershop was where he was identified by H.H. H. Anthony. Gun drawn on him, and Billy the Kid took out running. This town is so charming, you just can't imagine. Come to Heiko, come to Hamilton. Heiko he died, Hamilton he's buried, and both of them he lived in. This is Billy the Kid territory. And Heiko. Look at the beautiful mural on the wall. And there, of course, there's a little cut out of Billy the Kid, age 90. Heiko, we're glad you're here. Heiko is a friendly city. In uh, downtown Heiko, it says Billy's funeral. Heiko's Rutledge Funeral Home on Highway 6, which is behind us, was known as the Barrel Rutledge Funeral Chapel in 1950, when it handled the funeral service of Brushy Bill Roberts, who many believe was the famous Billy the Kid. He was buried in a cemetery near Hamilton. So this is another historical marker downtown. Long enough to get here, this is the beautiful Billy the Kid Museum of Heiko, Texas. It's located on the cor corner down here in downtown. Billy the Kid Museum. You really need to see it. You need to come to Heiko. Here again, Billy the Kid walked these streets right where we are. Right where his museum is. Looking around the square. Just to tell you, show you the location, the Billy the Kid Museum. Down the corner, right there next to the corner, is the barber shop where he was identified by H.H. H. Anthony as Ben Bonnie. And across the street, down the street, is the statue to Billy. Looks like he's drawing on us right now. Folks, I'm in Heiko, Texas. This may be a little jumping around, it's cold out here, but you're getting a little tour for a very small price of what it costs to actually make this tour. But someday I hope you're motivated to come to Heiko, Texas, the final last home of Billy the Kid, and come to this museum here. The famous Judge Hefter is often here, can be found here. Has a gift shop, Sasparilla, Dublin Dr. Pepper. This is the Billy the Kid Museum, the Billy the Kid Museum of Heiko, Texas. Beautiful Heiko and our, our Billy the Kid. Thank you. This is Judge Bobby E. Hefter of Heiko, Texas. The law west of the Brazos, the man who's kept the, the truth about Billy the Kid alive, and he's done it right here in Heiko, Texas. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, Dr. Tunstall, he was great, and uh, William V. Morrison, he was great too. But you know, they could kind of go somewhere else. Judge Hefner's always been right here to take the heat for Billy the Kid. So I think we owe him a lot of gratitude for standing up for the truth. Mr. Hefner, I mean Judge Bobby Hefner. What do you think about that new poll that came out that said that 51% of the people that were polled over the internet, and it, we had, it was independent of us, said that uh, they believed that Billy the Kid was not killed in 1881, but that he lived and died as Russian Bill Roberts? Well, it's encouraging to see the majority 
willing to look beyond the legend and, and search for facts. If that trend carried over into the west, rest of our way of life, uh, we could see a lot of elections go different. Uh, a lot of the accepted ways of our life change. So it's, it's pretty encouraging. Maybe that's the first step towards reality. Well, that's a good way to put it. And that's true. I, I was uh, real pleased to hear that, Paul. 51% of the people accept Billy the Kid as being Brushyville robbers. And may I add, it's largely due to this gentleman to my left, um, Judge Hefner, has carried the ball here. No, and it's been a united effort. And, uh, not only Marsh and Tungsten that you name, you've certainly contributed heavily to it. But when your entire case is built on documented facts, um, I guess I really don't understand why anyone really interested and, and with, with an open mind look at what's on the table. I don't understand how the 5% could disagree. Or, or anybody for that matter, because, uh, well, you'd have to be prejudiced and, and hanging on to some old wives' tale in, in order to not accept proven fact. However, the age old joke is true. You've been there and I've been there. At, uh, in a confrontation with your wife, she'll say, don't confuse me with facts. My mind's made up. <laughs> That's an excellent way to put it. You know, I would like to say, though, that uh, Judge Hebner is very modest. Um, like I said before, Dr. Tunstall lived in the house. I couldn't even hardly find it in Roswell. And I live, you can't even find me. And, and uh, you're the one that's been right here and everybody can find you. <laughs> you had the tough end of this deal. But uh, I want to tell you that, uh, Judge Edmund, that you are very much appreciated. And, I appreciate and it. That 51% is your 51%. I know others had something to do with it, but, you know, things like that that you <laughs> had to carry it on, and you've done a tremendous job here in ICO. You just, uh, I don't think anyone could really express to you how much appreciation we all owe you and your wonderful wife because behind every good man is a good woman. But uh, I appreciate you, Judge Hesner. You're, you're a great man in your own lifetime. Most people have to wait years for that, but you're great in your own lifetime. That's really, really something. You flatter me. Well, I'll just tell it like it is. Thank you, Billy the Kid Country.